Hello all, my name is Sarah Brain, your Earth School Shaman, here to bring you your April energy update. We have four major themes moving through for the month of April. Uh, we'll review a little bit of March because it's been a, kind of a crazy month to say the least. Um, but the four major themes that we have coming up for April is number one, um, stillness is not going to be an option anymore. <laughs> it is just going to be something that we need to place in motion repeatedly. The second one is an emotional upturn with a slow fizz. The third is a physical imbalance starts to take place and it can take you off guard a little bit to become aware of that. And also the fourth and final one was this beautiful image of uh, painting the world around you with the colors of your emotions. So let's dive in. Hello everyone, welcome back. So we are going to slowly uh, introduce the uh, April themes, but March, March was a huge irrigation of the heart. There was a lot of stuff moving. Um, I think people really felt the amount of stress that is moving in their lives and not to reiterate it uh, in a way where we beating ourselves up, but actually uh, learning to be compassionate with ourselves. Most of the stressors in our lives are things that we just kind of agreed to, but they weren't really authentic to us. So March was really that month of um, even just the weather in general. It was just bringing us into this space of really reflecting. And if you weren't forced to do it through the weather or through situations within your environment, um, then you were at least doing it with illness or anything like that. There's been a lot of stuff moving around, uh, especially here in New England. So there has been a lot of uh, emotional upturn and things of that nature. And, you know, from a shamanic perspective, those are all opportunities for us to really let go of things that really have not served us from the start with just coming to the realization that that that's not true to us. Um, so when we're talking about April, April, we started with this theme of stillness is no longer an option. It's not something that you can squeeze into, um, you know, your, your five minute morning routine. It's now going to be something you have to put into your life and it, ha it can't be something that you're going to force in. It's going to be something that is, is going to be with ease, meaning things are going to start coming out of your life that no longer serve a place. Um, and then our attachment to that is what's going to create frustration, anger, or relief. So there is this stillness that is moving forward in April. And it's this inner child of everyone that's coming out. Uh, you know, many have been brought up in all all types of trauma situations um and most people weren't actually allowed to be a child <laughs> you know it's like as soon as you hit a certain age you were no longer could be a child or do childish things with our imagination so there is this stillness that's coming forward and it's you need to create space or you're creating more noise and it's either we disassociate or we see it and we release it so when that happens, we usually want to go to another person and process things with another person. But in reality, um, you know, uh, the shamanic path is all about realizing that spirit is everywhere. That's an animated through everything. And as I was sitting here doing uh, this channeling down, um, the tree started to talk and the, the birds started coming up and my wind chime started to go off. And it was all that resonance coming in and and speaking on a different level and that's where we need to start coming home to and creating that space for because um, a lot of times we're taught to just continually add more uh, noise into our very noisy lives <laughs> when in reality we are going to be forced to create more space and uh, what we've seen with a lot of um, you know, colds and illnesses and things that would normally just, you can push through it, you're being forced to sit down and take some time off. Um, so that can be inconvenient for some people, but how you uh, maneuver 
through your emotions and that process is going to help you understand when you're creating space or when you're creating more noise in your life. So in the month of April and especially we're coming into springtime, especially here, um, everything's blooming, everything's coming up. Uh, how do you create space in your life? And if you create space by going for a walk or gardening or, um, you know, going out with friends or something like that, what, what can you do when you can't do those things? <laughs> you know, it's just as simple as sitting down and listening to the spirit family all around us. So this is going to be something that we want to seed. And if it's something that resonates with you to try to learn to take and create space within you and find that stillness, um, even when you don't uh, or you can't go for a walk or you can't go for a hike um, because a lot of times we can create more noise within ourselves by saying we can't do that rather than we can do it anywhere saying that we can do it anywhere you can do it in the car you can do it um, on the bus on the train whatever it is um, you can create it and that's you guarding your inner child and allowing it to come to the surface and that energy flow through you is going to be very abundant and very beneficial if we allow this process to um, unfold so for the second theme it was uh, emotional upturn and it showed me uh, like almost like soda or, um, you know, I, I use sparkling water. So the fizz that happens when you dump it out and that anxiety when you're like, is it going to spill over? <laughs> you know, that type of thing was what was being brought to the surface. It's realizing that you're not in a crisis, but you anticipating it to spill over will cause it to spill over. Um, so we have to keep that in mind when we're, when we're working with our emotions and our emotions are there to help us navigate through, um, through our body and our mind so that our minds can become clear so that we can really start listening to our hearts. So we have to, in this process, hold really true to our vision. And what is your vision, right? Have you ever been asked that question? You know, what is, what do you desire? What is your, uh, what, do you, what have you always wanted? If, if money wasn't, an, wasn't an issue or all of these things, all these obstacles that we place in motion in front of us that causes these obstacles in our lives, what would your vision be without all those things, without those, all those obstacles that we create? In reality, you can say it's created by someone else, it's created by this, it's created by that, but in reality, it is all created by us. So what is your vision then? What is your true vision? And holding true to that, because actually in the air, there's mostly water. Within us, there's water. Within the ground, there's water. There's water everywhere. And we know that our thoughts create things. And because there's so much water everywhere, it actually takes it and forms it into matter. <laughs> so you have to hold true to your vision and you have to remain an empty cup or hollow bone as much as possible so that you can really hold true to that vision. And when that emotional fizz tends to happen, we can really lean into that frustration that comes through, right? That frustration or that anger or what comes through. Because if we feed into that and let that emotion spill us into the past, then we are going to cause the crisis. Instead of, we can actually allow ourselves to witness the fizz and with our love and gratitude, we can see it come back down, right? And we can deal with it as it is. So it's important for us to realize that uh, it is time for us to start realizing that we create everything 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 in our lives and when we realize that and we really come to the center of that we can really pivot our entire lives um it's really fascinating our our science community is really catching up and they're really starting to <laughs> maybe not completely put it out there that uh, we are all energy and that um, everything that we say and feel and do is affected and it's powerful um, to just even just be in the sun and letting the elements work with us and getting the messages from that as well and for the second theme 
it's this physical imbalances that take you off guard. It was interesting because as I sat here, <laughs> out of nowhere, I started to tilt to one side. And I realized that, oh, that's what this is about, is actually recognizing when your body and your mind is out of balance. So if your body is out of balance, meaning you're kind of causing inward violence with your body, you know, condemning it for doing things that you don't want it to do, but yet your thoughts are doing another thing. When you're doing those types of things, you got to ask yourself, how do you care for yourself? Right? This is more than self care. How do you talk to yourself? How do you talk to your body when it's trying to move through, say, a cold or an injury? Right? It's your body is a very fascinating thing as we can heal pretty quickly from pretty much anything. Um, and if we actually get our mind in sync with it, we can heal so much faster. So the question is, is when these imbalances come in or when you feel a, a physical imbalance, like whether it's a, a dizzy spell or um, you've been sitting for a while and all of a sudden you feel like you're leaning to one side or like those types of things, to not merely think that something's wrong, <laughs> to immediately ask yourself, how am I caring for myself today? How am I speaking to myself today? Because when we start asking those questions, we can start to come into alignment with that gentle, deep compassion that's within ourselves. Because all that's around us is very neutral. Everything around us, the stillness, everything, everything around you is neutral. And when we come from a state of compassion, which is at the root of pretty much everything that really allows us to feel self-love, to feel love for another, to, to get into that law of attraction, all of those things. Um, we allow ourselves to become the dreamer, become the journeyer, right? Where we're moving through our reality um, like as, is, as it's a dream. So when we dig down to that, compassion when we feel um, an imbalance, right? Whether it's an energy imbalance, whether it's a physical imbalance, whether it's an emotional imbalance, to lean towards asking yourself, how am I caring for myself today? Not how did I care for myself 10 years ago or five days ago or like a list of excuses that come from my ego, but just gently ask yourself, how am I caring for myself today? And if you're sick, how do you care for yourself? And when you're well, how do you care for yourself? Because a lot of times when we're actually sick, we condemn our bodies for making us not go to work and, you know, do all the things that we had to do. Because, we, you know, like any mother, when we get sick, I have like a laundry list in my head of things I could be doing right now. But instead, I'm sitting on the couch, right? So you got to think of those things. We, we have to be learn to be more compassionate with ourselves. Because we're going into spring cleaning and all of those things. And we got to start being a little bit more kinder to ourselves, especially in the month of April, or it will make us do it. So the fourth theme is paint with all the colors of your emotions. I saw literally the Disney movie of Pocahontas with paint with all the colors of the wind. The whole, the whole, the whole song came through. It was great. So what does that actually mean? My interpretation of something like that is how do you heed your medicine, your wisdom? How do you develop it? How do you sit with it? How do you let it grow? How do you have space for it? What do you know? Do you know what your medicine is? These are the greatest mysteries of our lives. And these are going to be kind of bubbling to the surface in the month of April. I get excited because I always experience these things a couple months ahead of time. And I get excited because when these things come to the surface for these types of things, I go, yay, even though it was kind of wonky at first, it's a beautiful unfoldment of what you're designed to do and be. And it's not what you're physically doing out in the world. It's how you carry your wisdom and energy through the world. Because that, my friends, causes ripples beyond time space into the ether and back again. That's what the true law of attraction is all about. So we have a lot moving for the month of April. 
feel free to leave a comment below. We have lots moving forward. We're starting our enrollment for Shamanic Wisdom 101 starting in June. So you're welcome to join that. It is a prerequisite to do the Shamanic Alchemist program. I hope to all see you guys very soon. Have a wonderful spring and I'll see you next time.